Hi, and welcome to lesson one of my series of XNA tutorials. Um, this is going to be initializing XNA in a Visual Basic 2010 project. Uh, this is RM2K Dev, and you can find more lessons at www.xnatutor.com. Uh, for this lesson, we'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 and XNA 4.0. So to begin, we're going to head over to the File menu and hit New Project. This will bring us up with a window which will show us all of the templates that are currently installed. You'll need to make sure that you have the XNA Game Studio 4.0 installed on your machine and Visual Studio 2010, of course. <clears throat> so select game, XNA Game Studio 4.0, head down and hit on Windows Game. We're going to call this uh, initializing, initializing XNA01. Make sure that create directory for the solution is ticked and select OK. OK, now this has created us a blank template for a XNA game. If we were to run this right now, what we would get is a blue screen with the default cornflower blue background. Now, for this lesson, we're going to be initializing XNA on a Windows form. Um, so we won't be using any of this, any of these default uh, any of the default template that Microsoft has given us. However, the reason we selected that template was because it gives us the content manager and content pipeline. So that means that we can add uh, sprite fonts and textures, <coughs> effects if you like, but we'll get into that later. So I'm going to delete these files here, game.icon, game1.vb, gamethumbnail.png, and program.vb from the project. And you'll see that gives us an error. Submain was not found in initializing XNA01. What this means is that the entry point for the program has been deleted, obviously, because I deleted the uh, the, the module that was containing that. So because we're going to be using Windows Forms, uh, we can ignore that for now. So just right-click on the, the XN, initializing XNA01 project and select Add Windows Form. This brings up the uh, Microsoft template window where you can select the type of file that you want. Uh, we want Windows Form. I'm just going to call that Form Main and select Add. Now that adds a, a blank form to our project. So uh, because we're going to use this form to display the game, uh, I'm just going to add a picture box to it. And that, that'll be the container that holds the game. Uh, the reason that I do that is because later on we can add buttons and uh, if the game's contained within a picture box we can move that around the form and put buttons in front of it or hide controls behind it. That, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to position that into the top left corner. And to do that, uh, all I've done is I've selected it and I've used the arrow, I've moved it as close as I can and used the arrow keys to, to move that into position. <coughs> so select that button and I'm just going to delete that right <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set the dimensions for this picture box to 640 by 480 and that gives us a, the basic canvas to draw this game into uh, from there I'm just going to position the window so that it it nicely fits and to do this I'm just holding down shift and using the arrow keys so once you've moved the form into position select that picture box and go down to into its properties where it says the anchor tag set that to bottom right and bottom sorry right and bottom and also keep top left top and left selected what this means is that when the form expands and contracts, the picture box is going to be anchored into those positions and it will expand and contract with it. Um, I'm just going to give the, the form a quick title. Initializing XNA Lesson 1. Tutor.com Alright. And that about does it for this, this bit. Alright. So go to Project and select Initializing XNA01 Properties. Uh, select the Applications tab and set the Startup object to be Form Main. 
Now you'll notice when I did that that the error we had down here has disappeared. All this means is that the the entry point for the program has been set at the location of this form, so that when we run the project, the form is the first thing that you'll see. Oh, I'm just going to clear the immediate window because there were some issues from the last project. <coughs> okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually initialize XNA and set up a basic game loop and possibly draw something on the screen. So to do this, all we're going to do is double click on the form and that'll bring us up with this form load section here. Uh, using that, what we can do is now we can just go in here and I'm going to start programming now. So um, I'm going to create a graphics device uh, that's going to handle our graphics. Um, yeah, th that'll represent our graphics card. So I'm just going to say public graphic, actually, I'm just going to call it G device as graphics device. And so basically all that is, is it's just set us up a graphics device and that's going to represent our graphics card. So just under form load, I'm going to add a private function. I'm going to call that initialize, I know it, initialize graphics. And we're going to pass that a parameter of surface, which is going to be a picture box. Now you see we have a small error here. Um, if you hover a mouse over that and select the error correction options, it'll give you the option to import system.windows.forms. Just do that and uh, that, that'll fix this issue. <coughs> so now we've got a, oh, one more thing is we want to pass that as a reference. We, because we want a reference to the picture box that we'll be initializing on, we don't want to make a copy of it. So once we have the initialized graphics function set up, I'm just going to set up a return value as a, a boolean value. And I'm going to put a try catch in here. What we're going to do is we're going to do all of our initialization inside of this try. If there's any errors, uh, we're going to return false. So we'll set the ret value to false here. And at the very end of the function, we will return the return value. Um, now, inside of the try, we'll also set the final thing that happens to ret value equals true. And all that this means is that if we've finished everything up here, and it gets down to the end, when it hits this return function, it'll be set to true, and initialize graphics is going to be returned as true, whereas if an error happens in here, it'll jump out into this exception, and the ret value will be set as false, and the return value will become false. So what we can do in here is we're just going to set up the presentation parameters. So I'm just going to say dim p, p param as new presentation presentation parameters. Now you've got a couple of options of what you can do here. Um, this basically sets up how the screen is going to be displayed. Um, the vertical synchronization, um, basically pretty much anything to do with anything to do with the the screen itself. So all we're going to do in here is we're just going to set presentation interval equals um, immediate, and basically what that means is it's not going to wait for the vertical synchronization. It'll just uh, draw the screen as soon as it can. Um, this basically gives us the most frame rate, but it's not vertically synchronized. So if you're making a fast paced action game or a first person shooter, you might get some tearing. Uh, if you've played any, any popular titles, you'll often see a, an option in the options menu for V-Sync. That is this value here. Otherwise, if you did want V-Sync, all you'd have to do is set this to default and the f the screen would be locked at 60 frames per second or whatever the V-Sync, the refresh rate of the monitor is that you're using. But well, I'm going to set this to immediate. The next thing that we need to do is we need to initialize a graphics adapter. So I'm just going to dim 
graphics adapter as graphics adapter. There we go. Um, so what this is is this is ba this is actually representing the graphics card. Um, graphics device up here is it's not actually representing the graphics card. It's representing the XNA's internal graphics device, which you can use to draw things to the screen. And graphics adapter is representing the actual graphics device itself. We're going to set this to be equal to graphics adapter dot adapters dot item. And what this does is this sets this to the to the first graphics card in the system. So if you have an SLI setup, this will just be referencing the first. Um, if you want to reference the second, you can use number one here. Uh, and for lucky people who have three or four, you can use two and three. We're just going to use the first graphics card here as all computers have the first graphics card. If it's not a graphics card, it's a internal graphics driver like the Intel GM 950s, I think they are. Anyway. Uh, so now that we have a graphics adapter, now what we need to do is initialize the graphics device. So G device equals new graphics dot graphics. Actually, we don't even need that. We just need graphics device. This is going to ask us for a graphics adapter. So as the first parameter, we will set graphics adapter. It's going to ask us for a graphics profile. Uh, if you're using XNA 3.1, you won't get this option. It'll ask you for presentation parameters and something else that I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's extremely easy to figure out. But we're using XNA 4 here, so set that to the high def profile, which will basically give you the full range of options from the XNA um, library. And then we'll set its presentation parameters to be equal to P param that we set up earlier. And now the graphics device has been initialized. From here, we're just going to find, ah, oh, as I forgot to set the function, we need to return a boolean value. There we go. That gets rid of any warnings that we had. So this is our initialize initialization. This initializes our graphics, sets up our presentation parameters, uh, and determines what graphics profile we're using. You can do other things in here using pparam, but I suggest you just experiment with this. Um, you have the full screen option here, which allows you to toggle between full screen and windowed mode. Uh, but we're not going to be using that in this tutorial. So I'm just going to save my project real quick. <coughs> okay. So we're going to go into the form load events here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if initialize graphics and we're going to pass it that picture box we'll do that in a second equals true sorry equals false then we're going to pop up a message box and all that's going to say is there was a problem initializing the game and we'll quit now you'll notice I didn't pass it the uh, picture box option here. That's just because I wanted to go back to the form and name that picture box PB game. And all we have to do is pass that function PB game. Right. So just below this initialize graphics call, I'm going to say call game loop. What this does is we're going to create a function called game loop and we'll do that down here. We'll call this private sub game loop. Now game loop takes no, no parameters. Um, all game loop is going to do is it's going to set up a, a loop that we use to render the screen and handle input and AI and all those other game functions. So to do that, all we have to do is type in do while now we want this loop to go on forever, so I'm just going to say while well, 1 equals 1. 1 always equals 1, so the loop will continue to happen. The very bottom of this function, I'm going to put application.doEvents. And what this means is that while you're in a do loop here, uh, everything above this will be executed, and as soon as it hits this loop function, it'll go back to do while at the start. The reason why that's a problem is because the form never has time to update itself. 
or handle events such as key presses, mouse movements, and things like that. So by having application.doEvents here, we have essentially stopped the form from freezing. Um, it's not the most efficient way, and I'll show another way of doing that in a future tutorial, but for now we're just going to use application.doEvents. So the first thing we want to do while we're in a, in a game loop is we want to clear the screen. So we're just going to type ddevice.clear and we're going to set that to be color.cornflowerblue. You can choose whatever color you like, but cornflower blue seems to be the default among XNA users. And the last thing we want to do is present this information to the screen. So we will say gdevice.present. Now, if we run this, I hope we should be getting a blue screen. So let me just save my project and hit the play button here. There was a problem initializing the game. That's not good. So let's just have a quick look at what actually happened here. We'll just put some breakpoints in here and see what I've done. I may have made an obvious mistake here. I'm just going to step through these. Oh, there seems to be an issue initializing the graphics device. So... Ah, right. I forgot to set up the surface. That was my fault. We have to set the presentation parameters device window handle to be equal to surface dot handle. Sorry about that. Um, basically what this does is this allows the graphics to know that it's rendering itself to surface. Surface being a reference of the picture box. And there's another error. Let's have a quick look at what that is. Hmm. Uh, as you can tell, I didn't actually prepare this earlier. So let me just have a have a quick look at what's going on here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly load up another project that I have here which I probably should have done before I made this tutorial. And I'll just grab out that section of code. I have that initialized in this project. Ah, here we go. That's the other line I was missing. P param dot is full screen equals false. And what that does is that stops it from trying to initialize a full screen game. Oh, we can get rid of these breakpoints now. And there we go. We have nothing. That's normal. Uh, the problem is we've entered a do loop without actually displaying the form. So before the form was displayed, uh, it was never actually called to be visible. So all we have to do is the first thing we do in form load is just say me.show. And that just makes it so that the form always becomes visible. And there you go. We've successfully initialized XNA in Visual Basic using Windows Forms and not the default game loop. So thank you for following this tutorial. This is RM2K Dev, and you can find more XNA lessons at www.xnatutor.com. Bye.